Hi, readers. Welcome to Books Connect Us from Penguin Random House. This is a podcast about staying connected with each other and the stories and authors who inspire us. Laura Hankin is a comedian, musician, and author of Happy and You Know It. Her latest novel is A Special Place for Women, which takes a comedic look at an exclusive women-only social club where the elite tastemakers of New York City meet. The deeper our protagonist gets into this new world where billionaire girl bosses mingle with occult-obsessed bohemians, the more she learns that bad things happen to those who dare to question the club's motives or giggle at its outlandish rituals. Now let's join Pat Stango in conversation with Laura Hankin. So thank you so much for joining us on Books Connect Us. Laura, how are you doing? Thank you for having me. I am doing great. I get to talk about my book with you. That is, is is that really the main uh, reason to write a book is to then get to talk about having written a book? Um, well, yeah, I mean, definitely at parties to be able to go around and be like, oh, I'm an author. Um, but I do think that sometimes the publicity circuit is a little scary. You know, what if somebody asks you a question that you're not prepared for? With my last book, somebody asked me something about like, a plot hole that I hadn't even realized was there. And you just kind of have to desperately, you know, like a duck under the surface, you're paddling, 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 but uh-huh. I have to stay very calm and be like, wow, that's a great question. Mm. <laughs> Why are they asking about plot holes? Were you interviewed by a, a group of YouTube commenters? Like who interviewed <laughs> yeah. you? To be fair, I am thinking back to this. I think it was a book club. I was, I did like a drop in book club. So it okay. was different than like a big book big publicity thing but, okay okay yeah. it wasn't interviewers people who actually were examining the book after yes. just reading okay Got yeah it. wow I already gave you a false impression about something and then you had to correct me <laughs> See, that's what a host is here publicity. for <laughs> here to, to save you from your own verbal mistakes mm-hmm. um, thank you I'm glad it seems like you're, you're doing well. So when we're recording this, you know, it's like late April, this comes out early May. And, you know, we're, we're sort of heading out of the pandemic ish a little bit, you know, like people are getting vaccinated, things are opening. So staying on the positive, I want to ask you, Laura, like, what are you looking forward to doing? What's even something like trivial that you're excited for? Oh, okay. I'm so excited to go to the dentist. I can't even tell you. I haven't gone to the dentist all year and I'm so worried because I have weak teeth. <laughs> you have weak teeth. Is that that's a is that a medical diagnosis or is that just like I, I've never heard of weak teeth? I think when I was born the doctors were like, Oh, she has weak teeth and weak bones. Um, but then I, I've actually been fine. And mm-hmm. I haven't gotten a cavity yet because I'm like obsessive about brushing my teeth. But okay. I'm, I'm worried. Sometimes I have stress dreams like <laughs> um, that I go to the dentist and I have 14 cavities. Don't That's... you love how related this is to my book? <laughs> I mean, I, I could see the main character of your book having some stress dreams about their teeth. So I, th- I think it's, it's all in there. Everything about you, it it's correlates to the book. So I, I think it's all <laughs> it's all part of it. I also could imagine, yeah, dentists, there's going to be so many situations like that these next few months where people show up at the dentist after not being there for a year and the dentists are just going to be like, what did you do? Oh, for sure. Plus, you know, not to mention all like the probably sugary snacks that people have been eating to just soothe themselves (laughs) over the course of the pandemic. Our, Our poor teeth. Yeah. Yeah. It's the perfect storm, though. I guess it's it's the perfect windfall if you're a dentist. It's about to be a good year for yeah. dentists out there. And last year was probably a very bad year. So I'm I'm happy for them. Mm hmm. Me too. <laughs> um, so this past year, you know, you had a book that came out. Was it spring 2020? You had uh, Happy and You Know It. And you have your new book, A Special Place for Women, coming out now in May 2021. Did you write this book at all during the pandemic year? Or was this something that you had written before this, you know, the quarantine era started? So I wrote a first draft of this book and turned Mm. it in in January 2020, maybe early February 2020. So Mm. I wrote it all uh, before the pandemic started. But, you know, when it was sort of like, 
a storm on the horizon. Right. Um, and but then I was editing it all during the pandemic. And that was sort of that was a wild experience because, you know, it's this book about this really close like secret society of women mm -hmm. who are always hanging out inside together. Um, and I was editing it. And meanwhile, I was like, I haven't hugged my friends in months. <laughs> when will I hug them again? And so, you know, I think there's a chance that the characters have like more intense relationships and touch each other a little bit more than they would have otherwise. <laughs> Maybe I oh, like, that's... added in more <laughs> during oh, the editing. You know... That's interesting. And now I have to reread the book and to see where if I could pick out the moments that you added in in your most panicked quarantine days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, see, that's why it's like little Easter eggs of of despair. Yeah, you're like, oh, wow, why are they holding hands so much in this scene? <laughs> why is she talking about how like close they're talking to each other? <laughs> Before we get into the book, which is, you know, uh, Sneak Preview is awesome. I loved A Special Place for Women. But let's talk a little bit about your background. So, you know, looking at your career other than being an author, you've been an actress, you've done and still do a lot of sketch comedy. You were a singer who performed for children, mm -hmm. which, you know, you then worked into Happy and You Know It. So was becoming an author and writing books always something that you planned on or like hoped for or did it more come out of all these other creative pursuits well I was always a huge reader from the time that I could read <laughs> on um and I I would write little stories growing up and very bad poetry um and you know in second grade I remember we had a class assignment to write a book about something and everybody wrote a little like my favorite color is red and here's you know three little illustrated pages about why or my favorite sport is baseball and I wrote this like long in-depth story about my family history where I revealed like multiple family secrets <laughs> and then we read it we read all of our books out loud at parents night um and yeah, so I think even from them, then there was a part of me that wanted to write like juicy, fun, delicious mm -hmm. things about people. Um, but then I got really into theater uh, for many, many years. And I think that was my primary creative outlet. I also was not a very confident teenager. So I was like, Ugh, I don't have anything to say. Like, who would want to listen to me? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I like theater because I can say somebody else's words and then people think I'm interesting. Um, really fun person. To <laughs> hang out with would, you, would you consider yourself at that point? Were you a theater kid? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I was in like every musical. My friends and I started our own community theater because we felt like doing, you know, one musical per year at school was not enough and we needed to do more musicals. <laughs> yeah, that's theater kid. Wow. Yeah. More, one one a year is not enough. Yeah, no, definitely we, theater kid. We wanted like three, three a year at least. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, then I, I moved to New York after college to try to pursue theater and I was auditioning and auditioning and getting some things, but that lifestyle, you're just like waiting around so much mm -hmm. for somebody else to give you permission to be creative. And I was working all my random day jobs and I just felt like I needed something that I could do on my own time and something that I could think about that would bring me joy. And so I was like, why don't I try writing and see if it's a thing that works for me since I've always loved to read so much. And then I really realized I loved it and fell deeper and deeper into it. Yeah, that that is the way to look at uh, becoming an author is you just fell deep into it. And now <laughs> here you are. Yeah. What? A, and I just before we get out to anybody, I just got to ask, how did you end up uh, becoming a singer who performs for children? And you know, that again, that is the uh, one of the basis of your last book, Happy You Know It, which everyone should also check out. How did you end up in that world? And why did you feel like it was it was something that you wanted to write about? Mm. So there was a job board, an online job board that had job listings that were often very good for theater people. Um, I think it was on 
like playbill.com. So you could go and there was a section for auditions and then there was a section for day jobs. Um, and I saw one for like a kid's musician. And so I went and auditioned for it. Um, and then once I, you know, got into that world doing classes for this jimboree type place, um, mm -hmm. just more and more opportunities kept coming my way in that world. And, you know, moms would be like, hey, we're doing like our own birth, like private birthday parties. You want to come play? Or like a, a friend who I'd met through that would be like, I'm starting my own company where we send people to wealthy people's apartments to play for their kids because <laughs> they don't want to have to come to, you know, the, the class with everybody who could just sign up. They want to curate it. Um, they, they can't come <laughs> below 14th Street. Oh, absolutely not. No. <laughs> uh, yeah. And so I, I just, I found that world really interesting because I was meeting all these women all the time, but I was always seeing them through the lens of like, they are the moms. And they were seeing me through the lens of, I am the musician. And then every once in a while, um, that reality would break a little bit and we would break through and like have a human conversation where it's like, oh, or we could be friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but, you know, <laughs> we certainly never became friends in the way that or became entwined in the way that the musician and happy and you know it does mm -hmm. where she really like inserts herself into the lives of these women. So, uh, yeah, that, that, uh, was such a great book, but now your newest book is called a special place for women. So now I'm going to give you the question that trips up every author when they're on a podcast or an okay. interview. Okay. Could you tell us a little bit about your book? <laughs> what is a special place for women about? Sure. A Special Place for Women is about a journalist named Jillian who's not in a good place in her life. She's just been fired from her journalism job. Her mother has just died. She's, you know, turning 30. She feels like her career has passed her by. Um, and she decides that she's going to, like, one last big try, juicy story. She's going to infiltrate this top secret women only social club for the New York millennial elite. And there are all these rumors that swirl about these women and how powerful they are. Um, and so, yeah, she decides she's going to get into the club and find out all their secrets and then maybe bring them down. But then she realizes the women are more powerful than she ever could have imagined. How did that, I do? <laughs> that was great. Thank you. You are ready. You are ready for just the nonstop interview every 15 minute publicity tour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 time to get you out there. In this book, you have these characters who are in the secret society and you have a character who's like a type A sort of like girl boss uh, person and someone who's like a wellness guru who's sort of like there's definitely some hints of like goop goopiness mm. in there to me and a uh, experimental performance artist. So with those type of characters, I guess, first of all, like what is your personal relationship to those parts of culture, you know, to like hashtag girl boss and, you know, wellness guru and those type of things, are those the type of people or uh, things that you have an affinity for, or, like find yourself drawn to? Well, I definitely, you know, for a long time, followed all the girl boss accounts <laughs> online and, you know, liked all the pictures of like, yeah, hashtag girl boss, go get him, <laughs> lean in. Um, and but mostly I would say I've been an observer and have yeah, I've been so far outside of like corporate America that I think girl boss never particularly applied to me. But I I enjoyed watching it and I hoped that it was working. And I think the sad thing was realizing, you know, after 2016 and in recent years and the pandemic has really laid this bare that like, that's not really working. And, you know, <laughs> women have so far to go still um, mm -hmm. in terms of equality and the, the fight is not even close to being won and we might have to try some different methods. <laughs> Tell us about how you balance the 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 need to write a narrative that really works and is realistic and draws people in but also with the fact that this is you know has a comedic tone to it and you're you're definitely like uh uh making some jokes at the expense of these archetypes but also they are real characters who we care about so like how do you balance that you know making fun of your targets and having comedy in the book but also making sure it's still a narrative that works 
Yeah, that's a great question. I really have to have a fondness for all of my characters, and I really have to believe that they all can be better people, you know, (laughs) even if they are not acting at their best at the moment. I have to believe that they come from a place of, of goodness and, you know, wanting to make the world a better place and wanting to be kind and all of these things. Um, so I think I, I can poke fun at their expense a little bit because I mean, minor spoiler alert, I think just of my author philosophy, generally I try to redeem people (laughs) Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. These aren't, these aren't obviously characters that, or, or types that you have a disdain for, you might find aspects of them ridiculous and Mm -hmm. then show that, but there's definitely no one, nothing in this book that you would be like, well, I'm writing about something that I despise. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I know how to like write major characters who I truly despise. (laughs) (laughs) I think well, I would lose some of the humor then because it might just come off as totally mean spirited. Mm-hmm. Well, you definitely, you know, in a special place and in Happy and You Know It, there, there's definitely this connective tissue of there being a somewhat, you know, either dark or weird underbelly to what's like a positive sheen, mm-hmm. you know, a positive exterior sheen. So I guess if you could talk about like why you think that is something you end up writing about. And then you also, Laura, have a very positive sheen. So can you tell us about the dark underbelly that you have? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's just all rotten inside here. (laughs) (laughs) Behind this smile. Ooh, watch out, baby. Um, (laughs) Why am I drawn to the dark underbelly? That's a great question. Uh, You know, I think... Give me one second to formulate an answer to this question. (laughs) Of course. Listen, it was a great question. So I understand you needing some time to come up with an answer that matches it. Yeah. My mind is truly blown here. (laughs) Yeah. No, it's, listen, that's, that's what I'm here for. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I think I, as a person, oftentimes will see something like in Happy You Know It, you know, these, these perfect moms or in a special place for women, these these clubs or these networking places or these co-working spaces. Like I went to an all-women's co-working space um, and this is what inspired the book. And I, I like wanted so desperately to belong, but then as soon as I got there, I was like, oh, I don't belong and I hate them, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, and so I think <laughs> I always am curious about the like, what what lies beneath this the surface that draws us in. Maybe it's because I have such a, a like love hate relationship with these things. And I, I want to believe that they're not all just as perfect as they present themselves as, because if they are, then like, I'd so desperately want to be a part of them. And why am I not? <laughs> Another thing that uh, I really enjoy about your books and that you do really well in a special place for women is playing with, with tropes, you know, like in special place, you, you, you know, you have the, character who's in a fake relationship with a person who maybe they should be with you know and (laughs) it's such a great well that's the thing could you talk about using tropes like that because to me it's always fun when you see someone talented play with something like that it's like the familiar plus something new yeah I mean what I, I I love that trope and it's it's so often the centerpiece of something like a movie or a book it is this, oh, we have to, you know, fake date for whatever reason. And then, mm-hmm. oh, no, we're falling in love for real. And I'm such a sucker for it. Um, but I, I love being able to pop it into something that's generally about something else. Like nobody would say that the the core of this book is a romance. <laughs> you know? Oh, def- yeah, definitely not. Right. Um, but I think in a way, like us all being so familiar with that trope, then gives us like a real quick shortcut to get invested in this relationship that I'm building and that like I'm very invested in this romance that's happening in the book. You know, the protagonist, in order to get into the club, she needs to present herself as being really like exciting and desirable and basically just play herself up to the club members so that they will invite her in. Um, And one of the ways that she does that is that her like childhood friend has recently become this celebrity chef and so she convinces him to like 
to fake date her and be her fake boyfriend because weirdly enough that gets the powerful women in this club interested in her because still you know one of the things that we're so drawn to is like ooh, did a powerful man choose you why <laughs> the funny thing about this and how this particular plot line came to be is that when I did go visit this uh, like exclusive women's co-working and networking space I remember being on the elevator leaving um, and the woman next to me was talking to her friend about like her life was so hard because she was dating a celebrity chef and he was never free for brunch and so I think from that moment on I knew that there needed to be a celebrity chef in this book somehow (laughs) Uh, so yeah uh, what is what is uh, I guess sort of like one one thing that you're really excited about readers picking up this book? I mean, I hope they just have so much fun reading it. You know, like <laughs> I I hope we've all had this very lonely year and we're starting to emerge from it and finally getting to see our friends. Um, but that's it's going to be a little exhausting probably at certain times and people are going to want to retreat with a book. And I hope that this can just be such a like great escape for people I'm also fascinated you know, there's this big twist in the book like 60 percent of the way through that mm-hmm. I'm really trying hard not to talk about um, we can't say it we can't say we it can't. we both want to say it but we can't I know oh um but it's been fascinating to see people's reactions to the twist so mm-hmm. that's that's always very fun for me <laughs> yeah yeah because when we talked the other day and I had said I had just read the book the first thing you asked is like what'd you think of the twist yeah i I loved it (laughs) Mm -hmm. but yeah when you go out on these book tours you you can't say the twist laura okay okay i won't (laughs) (laughs) but like a year from now when you're promoting the paperback you could start with the twist because by then it's up it's their fault if they don't know then it's like you can't you can't be upset if i tell you bruce willis was dead the whole time the sixth sense like what you can't. You know, okay <laughs> yeah. well you can no, but I, most I, people can't i knew that <laughs> <laughs> never seen the movie but i i knew it <laughs> um well thank you so much for joining us today laura this is really fun oh, what a joy it is talking to you <laughs> oh oh you know what actually one one last question that we always ask every author and i almost forgot to ask you is there something that you uh, is there a book that you would like to recommend to our listeners something you've read recently or in the last year or just ever you know what what is a book that you know if if you if you can't think of anything recent you could just say like you know pride and prejudice or something but yeah um well i okay i love tana french she you know writes these irish detective stories and i think she's got this really cool balance between plot and sometimes her books are so funny like the most recent book of hers that I read, actually listened to an audiobook, is called The Searcher. Um, and it, even as it deals with these heavy topics, I was laughing out loud. Um, and I think she also, she does some things that I try to do in this book that, again, I can't say because of the twist stuff. But you can't I can't say the twist, Laura. I, you can't do it. I know, I know. So I really admire her, and I, I feel like I read some of her books while I was writing this. Um, but then we were also just talking a book that I'm really excited to read that I haven't read yet, but that it also sounds like plays similarly with comedy and plot. Um, and you know, like a big fun driving narrative is dial a for aunties. Um, and I actually don't know the author's name, but you uh, would. Her name is Jesse Sutanto. Yes. So um, that's and I had just read list. that. It's really great. So I think you, I, I definitely think you'll love it. It's, it's got the same sort of like, fun twisty narrative and comedic tone Mm -hmm. yeah so i'm really pumped to read that one and it'll already be out by the time this podcast comes out yeah Mm -hmm. very cool well thank you so much laura (laughs) this was really fun thank you (laughs) all right everyone go read right now go buy a special place for women go do it please now Thank you for listening to Books Connect Us. For more great book recommendations and information about your favorite authors, feel free to follow Penguin Random House on social media or visit penguinrandomhouse.com. And if you've enjoyed what you've heard, go ahead and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts as it helps more listeners to find our show. 
This podcast is produced by Pat Stango and edited by Clayton Gumbert. I've been Aaron Leaf, and until next time, this has been Books Connect Us.